the sign for the gay pride that they took upon themselves is the rainbow. Now, any one of them that would study Torah just for a few hours, they would get to Parashat Noach. In Parashat Noach, Hashem destroyed the world. Why did Hashem destroy the world? He destroyed the world because we were committing non-stop sex crimes. We're wasting seed, which he considers 100% murder, which is the reason why he made it the first mitzvah, other than don't worship another god, don't idol worship. The very following mitzvah was that he gave the seven Noahide laws was do not murder, which is also relevant to not wasting seed. He says the one who spills blood of a man within a man, his own blood will be spilled. Here he's talking about wasting seed. But aside from that, he says that the creation went against its creator and itself by being with different species or the same gender. So men with men, women with women, lions with zebras, zebras with kangaroos. The whole world went and was inf- infected and infested by this bestiality, homosexuality, and things that are the opposite of the creation. Hashem said, I must destroy it. There's no hope for it. After he destroyed the world, there was only a few people left. Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives, and also Og Melech Abashan, Og the giant. And the animals. Now after Noah came out, saw the whole world's destroyed, it's horrible. Hashem said, is a sign, I'm going to give that I'm not going to destroy the world again. I'm going to put this rainbow. This rainbow is the sign of the covenant between you and I. That I'm not going to destroy the world. So every time you see that there is a rainbow, that is because I remember the deal we had. But Chazal says, from here we learn we're not allowed to point and look at the rainbow when it goes in the sky. And say, oh, oh, look at the rainbow. Why are we not allowed to look at the rainbow more than just once after we make the blessing and that's it? We can't point, tell people to look at it. We can't say, hey, hey, look at the rainbow, it's so pretty. Make our whole room full of rainbows. Why? Why are we not allowed? Hashem said it's a covenant. Shabbat's a covenant. Tefillin's a covenant. Brit Milah is a covenant. Why can't we look and celebrate this rainbow? Why isn't all of our Siduin full of rainbows? Because Hashem told us this rainbow is a covenant between me and Noah that I'm not going to destroy the world. Meaning that if I didn't have this covenant, every time you see a rainbow, I want to destroy the world. Every time you see a rainbow, it's only because I'm reminding myself of the deal I had with Noah. Not to destroy the world, but if I didn't have the deal, you have all gotten to a level of sin so great that I want to destroy the world. But I'm not, because of Noah from 5,000 years ago. Why did he destroy the world? Sex crimes. So these homosexual idiots that are celebrating their war against Hashem, they're using the rainbow as a sign, now realizing it's a sign against them. He destroyed the world because of actions like that. He he destroyed the world because of foolishness like that. That rainbow should be like the kryptonite to gay people. Because it's a sign that he wants to destroy the world. Why? Because of you. Not because of the tzaddik that's learning Gemara at 1 o'clock in the morning. 
Not because of the woman that's preparing for Shabbat, working overnight, just to make sure our kids have something to eat. Not because of the righteous Gentile that's just trying to learn the seven mitzvot bnei Noach. How could I? How could I help Am Yisrael? No, not because of them. He wants to destroy the world because of you. Because you are not only disclosing to the world what happens in closed bedrooms, which is an immodest act to begin with, but you're publicizing your war against the Shem. I've heard enough. New arrival screams echoing through the hallway to know that this ain't good. Once they pass them through the infierno, they don't come back. It's enough to make you go crazy. Do not think we fear you, spirit. We know your power is born of evil. This is your last night in the land of the living. Do you understand me, Malavan Demon? <laughs> that lived here called the Hetheringtons and unfortunately their daughter passed away of a heart attack inside the house. Basically they were so devastated that they reached out to people claiming to be psychic mediums. They actually weren't psychic mediums. They opened up a total of 11 portals inside this house and invited spirits and entities from all different kinds of dimensions. Well, I think there are certain pieces of evidence that there is an afterlife. The resurrection of the dead is affirmed uh, pretty clearly uh, in the Talmud and the Midrash. To be honest with you, to give this lecture is a nightmare. If it was up to me, I wouldn't. There's going to be some graphic details. This place is a maze. The person after death went to a place called Sheol. This is by far the largest near-death experience study that has ever been conducted. People go to a place and they experience weird things. And sometimes they actually will see a character of some type. Well, where did that come from? describe feeling profoundly peaceful, seeing a bright, warm, welcoming light. Some people describe watching doctors and nurses working on them with incredible accuracy. Next thing I knew, I was above my body watching the operation. How long did you feel like you were gone? I went to a place of timelessness. And so what that means, it could have been a second, could have been five minutes. I don't know.
Can you imagine waking up from your sleep and not being able to move? As I'm lying there, I realized that there's a, an evil presence next to me. Do you believe that angels, demons exist? Oh my god, dude! Strange things keep happening. Bizarre nightmares, as if I'm on fire. <gasps> Whoa, what the hell is this? Man, I've got bad chest pain. Satan's Hollow is what it's called, the portal to hell. Some people calling it an eye of fire, while others said it looked like the portal to hell opening up. <laughs> thing I know, I was outside of my body looking at my body. What I'm going to do is called claromancy, the art of throwing lots or throwing bones. 2,000 years of experience passed down, recorded, of how demons work. God has them all on a leash, and he lets the leash go enough to let them tempt us because that's what makes us spiritually stronger. I'm trying to be as graphic as possible so you understand what we're talking about. Here. It's your ticket to reality. It's your ticket to freedom. It's your ticket to immortality. Is there an afterlife? Is there a this God? It's the type of information that can keep you away from yourself. What happens to us after we die?